Here are some of the strangest advertising campaigns ever. Number nine, nice trunk space. Imagine being an exec at Ford Motors and someone at JWT India comes to you with an idea of an ad showing three young women tied up in the trunk of a Ford car with then Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi giving a peace sign driving. You'd say no, right? Yeah, well, actual Ford execs did not say no and they got fired over the ad. The ad triggered a massive outcry with women's rights groups criticizing the company for insensitivity and outright misogynistic behavior. The ads were released in India where politically incorrect ads are still shown on a regular basis. Obviously, the controversial ad was trying to promote the large trunk space of the car, but really, we're still trying to understand the humor angle here. Another version of the ad shows Paris Hilton driving the car, taking out her reality TV competition, The Kardashians. After the social media uproar, Ford quickly ordered the ad to be pulled down and issued a formal apology stating they deeply regretted the incident and agreed with their Indian partner that it should have never happened because it was contrary to the company's standards. Number eight, Smiling Bob. Remember back in the day when we were all bombarded with spam emails that advertised pills promising us bigger junk? Ah, the good old Wild West days of the internet. You guys remember the one company that took those spam emails to the big stage? Enzyte is an herbal nutritional supplement that supposedly promotes, quote, natural male enhancement, which is their way of saying our pills will make your junk bigger. Of course, there's no proof or even a hint of a suggestion that their product works. Enzyte's effectiveness was called into doubt and the claims of the manufacturer had been under scrutiny from various state and federal organizations. The company basically straight up lied in their marketing. The object of the ads was to make people think they could make things bigger by taking a wonder pill when the company knew that it did not work. The ads were actually unintentionally, or maybe intentionally, hilarious, as it showcased a man named Bob whose life got 20 million times better when he took the pill. But come on, most of us knew that the pills don't work. The founder of the company and his mom both went to jail because of bad business practices. Can you guys think of an ad campaign that had more lies than this one? Let us know in the comment section. Number seven, keep it clean. Back in April 2017, Nivea released probably the most controversial ads of that year. Their Facebook ad was aimed towards the company's Middle Eastern customer promoting a new invisible deodorant. It showed the back of a woman's head with long dark hair with the rest of her body wrapped in a white robe. Underneath, the slogan stated, white is purity. The post was captioned with, keep it clean, keep bright, don't let anything ruin it, along with the hashtag invisible. The ad quickly came to the attention of social justice warriors all over the internet. Twitter was filled with people who were calling for Nivea to fire anyone in the marketing department who approved the ad. Nivea promptly removed the ad from Facebook and a spokesperson for the company formally apologized for the post. They stated that the image was inappropriate and that the ad wasn't reflective of their values as a company. They also stated that diversity and inclusivity were Nivea's core values and they take pride in creating products that promoted beauty in all forms. White's obviously a color associated with purity and we don't really think Nivea meant it in the way people took it, but then again, that's just us. File this one under dumb corporate mistakes. Number six, just don't do it. Not even Nike is safe from marketing blunders. Nike released a TV commercial back in 2000 that was a little too much for a family to see on TV. The commercial starred three-time Olympian runner Susie Favor Hamilton. You would think having a famous Olympic runner starring in a commercial advertising Nike's running shoes is a sure way to resonate with consumers, but Nike didn't exactly do things right. The commercial had Hamilton starting a bath in a dark, spooky house. While brushing her hair, she opens the mirror cupboard and puts her comb inside. As Hamilton shuts the mirror, there's a guy with a Jason mask and overall standing behind her. As this dude rushes her with his chainsaw, she's able to slip out the door and outrun him because of her Nikes. Doesn't sound that bad, right? Just a commercial inspired by classic movies. Well, the ad was banned because of the overall mood of the commercial, which was way too serious. Let's be honest, anytime a dude with a chainsaw is trying to go after someone, doesn't exactly put people in a happy mood. After Hamilton escapes, the slogan of, why sport, you'll live longer, pops up. Nike's classic movie remake was meant to be a throwback, but all it did was probably stir up PTSD for some people. Number five, here's my social. 
LifeLock Incorporated is an American identity theft protection company that used an innovative ad campaign, so to speak. In order to prove the efficacy of its system, LifeLock promoted itself by publicizing its CEO's social security number. Um, yeah, maybe the CEO can write off the scams on his taxes? Back in 2007, the LifeLock ads were seen all over the place. CEO Todd Davis openly challenged hackers to use and steal his identity, being confident in the fact that they could never do it. The ads emphasized their guarantee that LifeLock would cover all losses and expenses up to $1 million in case your identity was stolen. If there's one thing we know from watching enough movies about internet hackers, it's that to never underestimate them or egg them on. Needless to say, Davis's identity was stolen several times. One man in Texas used his social security number to take out a $500 loan. An AT&T wireless account was opened in Georgia under his name and used to charge around $2,300. After several lawsuits showed the inability of the company to follow through with its promises or keep identity safe, the CEO answered that this only proved his company's usefulness as his own identity was stolen only 13 times. Yeah, that's 13 times we don't want our identity to be stolen. LifeLock was actually levied a $12 million fine by the FTC for deceptive business practices and for failing to secure sensitive customer data. Yep, this company is still in business today. Number four, no new taxes. Just in case you didn't know, Airbnb is a multi-billion dollar company that connects people with spare housing with, well, people who need housing. The company started in San Francisco and has kept its headquarters there ever since. Back in 2015, San Francisco was about to have a vote on Proposition X a ballot measure that would have tightly regulated short-term home rentals in the city. This basically was a measure that would have raised taxes on Airbnb. However, Airbnb decided to release passive-aggressive ads that didn't quite go as well as they had hoped. The ads were seen on bus stops and billboards around the city, hinting that the company was pretty unhappy about having to pay $12 million in hotel taxes. The ads Airbnb put out gave suggestions to the city on what to do with the $12 million tax payment. Obviously, a lot of sensitive San Francisco residents were not amused. Let's be honest here. Airbnb should not have complained about the taxes they would have had to pay. Everyone has to pay taxes, and no one wants to hear a giant company whine about taxes. Number three, intense business. In case you guys didn't know, the Benetton Group is a global fashion brand based in Italy. The name comes from the Benetton family who founded the company in 1965. Benetton is known for controversial ads throughout the years, but this one probably takes the cake for weirdest. Why a fashion group decided to do some advertising involving political figures is beyond us, but hey, it's fashion. Benetton released a series of ads depicting many high-positioned government officials in a strange, let's just say, um, intimate meeting. By that, of course, I meant the ads depicted world leaders in a very intense lip-locking session. There was one ad showing then-President Barack Obama kissing his then-Venezuelan counterpart Hugo Chavez. Then there's another with Pope Benedict XVI kissing Iman Ahmad El Tayyib. The ads were just really weird. Benetton wanted people to embrace peace all over the world with their unhate campaign, but come on, does anyone want to see world leaders locking lips? Benetton officials argued that they intended the images to portray the concept of unhate, fostering tolerance rather than making a political statement. Oh, th that's what that was. Number two, French non-smokers right campaign. Back in 2010, the French Non-Smokers' Right Association pretty much shocked all of France when it's anti-smoking ads. Yeah, it's not exactly a pretty scene here. The campaign showed female and male teenagers either sitting or kneeling with a cigarette in their mouths while a man has a hand on their heads. The caption on the ad basically means that to smoke is to be a slave to tobacco. The campaign was supposed to help stop the rise in smoking in 13 to 15 year olds in France in recent years. The leader of the project for non-smokers rights, Marco de la Fuente, stated that the old argument of tobacco is bad for you just didn't work anymore and the campaign's message was that tobacco was a form of submission. Critics from feminist and pro-family campaigns stated that the campaign was offensive and counterintuitive. The French Secretary of State for Family Affairs, Nadine Morano termed the ads a public outrage to decency and vowed to ban the campaign. Following the ads, the Association of French Families filed an official complaint with the national advertising regulators, accusing the campaign of violating ethics rules. Heck, we might even be offended. Okay, just kidding. We're not. Number one, white versus black. When it comes to advertising, 
Sony has had more than a couple run-ins with controversial ads. However, its white versus black PSP campaign has got to take the cake. When the PSP was first released in 2004, the only available color was black. That is, until Sony decided to spice things up a bit and release a white version of the PSP. So what does a company like Sony do with two different colors for a product? Have the two colors compete against each other, duh! The images released featured a white girl dressed in all white in some sort of combat with a black girl in solid black clothing. Since the white PSP was the newest color, the images depicted the white girl defeating the black girl with one ad even showing the white woman grabbing the black woman's chin as if she were in control of her. Sony quickly removed the ads once the controversy started to avoid any sort of negative activity. We understand what Sony was trying to do with the ads and the fact that it's a Japanese company, but how did no one in the marketing department see how this could have been perceived? Here's what's next.